because I know uh, yeah. a lot of people in the Philippines who also who also are like this. So I don't think it's a matter of race or where you're from. It's just Filipino guys are just better in hiding it. Uh. Hey Zesties, welcome to the Gleeful Talk Show where we share zesty stories to cultivate the happiness and hero within. This episode is just a general chit-chat about dating, particularly with someone from a different culture. There are several layers to this topic and it sits close to my heart because I'm married to someone from a different culture. So I am curious about what others' experiences are and I might be sharing some of my experiences in other upcoming episodes soon. My guest for today is a fellow podcaster who is currently based in Germany and runs the podcast Pop Your Cultural Cherry, which aims to give its listeners a unique perspective of life in Europe with an Asian or Filipino twist. Please welcome Lavin. Hi, Lavin. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I know that you're currently in Germany and you have found your love life there. <laughs> so today... We would dig in a little bit more on your love life and your insights to share for our zesties. And of course, feel free to ask some of the things that you'd like to know as well. Sure. So may I ask, where and how did you meet? Yeah, so 2017, I started to do my master's, my MBA in the Netherlands. It was in a small city near the German border called Maastricht. It is one of the most popular student cities in, in Netherlands. And Netherlands is not a big country. And they have maybe like I don't know, a dozen student cities. And I was in one of them, which was close to the German border. Probably four months, four or five months after I started, I met my current girlfriend, Jenny. She at that time was working in, in that city. So what happened was I was a student, but she was working for a German company, but in the Netherlands. So the company that she was working for is a very big like automobile company, a German automobile company, which is yeah, nothing special because there are uh, dozens of German automobile companies. But she was living there for a couple of months already. And basically what happened was as I was studying and she was working, there were there are a couple of events that happened in the city. So these events are actually international organizations kind of have these sponsor these events. And, and one of these organizations is called Internations. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I'm but familiar with it, it, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of Internations chapters or branches all over the world in different cities. So I attended this Internations event and she also attended this same Internations event. It was both of our first times to attend an Internations event. I went to the Internations event because I was a student there. I didn't really get to interact you know, with, with a lot of people who are like in the workforce, in the labor force, people who are working. So I thought it would be a good way to network. But at the time, I was also single. So, you know, <laughs> maybe meet some interesting people as well meet some interesting girls and that's what kind of happened then there so at that time she was um also single so it was a good probably like a good a good match so in the beginning i was talking to uh, different people and then i met her we spoke and then eventually we kind of clicked and then i got her number and then one thing uh led to another and yeah that's how our story kind of started mm, interesting so did you kind of court her in the traditional filipino way um actually no i never follow this traditional filipino way of courting ever since i was was young. Um, I've not had that many that many girlfriends, uh, but I also grew up in a very liberal household. So yeah, also also the people around me never had this kind of way of, of courting girls, like the traditional Filipino way of, you know, what's a traditional Filipino way? Like really being super romantic, going through a lot of phases of dating, meeting the parents before, you know, you actually get serious. So that's not how I've, I've dated in the past. And yeah, also because you're in the new country i was we're not in the philippines we're in a, we're both in foreign countries to ours and i thought that you know i would kind of see how you know people do it in in europe because it's obviously very different from how people would do it in the philippines and i just decided to be very 
open and liberal about it. So to see kind of where it goes, how it goes, without really setting for myself like, oh, we must go through X number of dates before, you know, we can get serious or whatever. Or I should get to know her parents before we have a relationship or whatever. Because we're both, actually, we're the same age. So we were both, what, 27 at that time or something? 28. So I think when you reach a certain age and also at the same time, you're both living living in foreign countries, it kind of makes sense already not to be so traditional in that sense. Yeah. yeah. Did she know some Filipinos before you or some friends? Yeah, actually, yes and no. So in general, like in this part of Europe, there's not a lot of Filipino people. There's not a big Filipino community. She had one neighbor who was from the Philippines. So actually, I've met them already. So she knew one person, but they didn't really have any relationship. She didn't have any friends. She had like zero contact with other Filipino people. So I was more or less the first kind of really got to know. Before, did you have any like hesitations about dating outside Filipino nationalities? Actually, no, because actually my first girlfriend was not Filipino also. So she was she was an expat living in, in Japan. So she was that's actually my first girlfriend. And I think I was, I don't know, 22 maybe. And... So basically, my history of dating has pretty much been very international to that sense. I haven't had, as I mentioned, I didn't have a lot of girlfriends, but I've gone on dates with a lot of people from different countries. Personally, I I find this more interesting. Also, because if you're from Manila, you date somebody from Manila. Obviously, I've also had a girlfriend from Manila and dated other people from Manila. There's always, like, Manila is a very small place. There's always some connections just people kind of think the same way you have the same aspirations you have the same culture probably because you're from Cebu it might be a bit different but I mean probably if you dated somebody from Cebu you'd have the same kind of idea that you know the circles are always like integrated somehow and I don't know if for me to some extent it's it's nice because it's it's comfortable for you but at the same time it's not that exciting so I've always also kind of liked to date outside like of of the Filipino race. Ah, interesting. Because yeah. yeah. me, so I've only dated a non-Filipino, which is my husband now, because mm-hmm. I had some hesitations before. <laughs> so, and I grew up in a conservative household. Mm-hmm. And although I have aunts who have married non-Filipino men, so they're now living in, one is in Vienna and one is in the U.S. as well. But I didn't really thought about dating a non-Filipino guy for some reason. <laughs> Why? Why? Is there any... What's the hesitation about? Is it something to do... Is it just because they're different or... I I think I had this stereotype and twisted thinking before. You know, like in the movies, you know, the white men are not that faithful in the Hollywood movies. Aha, okay. So I, I feel like you shouldn't watch too much Hollywood movies. So because you will have a different or twisted thinking. So so that's what I felt before. And some people who dated expats who are in the Philippines and then they date different Filipinas, right? The the men yeah. and they yeah. date different women. So I, I heard some not so good stories. So that was that formed my initial bias. Notion. Yeah. Yeah. But I think to some extent, yes, because that's what you see in in, in the movies. But I think Filipino guys are just better in hiding it because I know uh, yeah. a lot of people in the Philippines who also who also are like this. So I don't think it's a matter of race or where you're from. It's just I think Filipino guys are better at, at hiding it. And you see it nowadays, like in you know, in Filipino drama and on TV, like also like guys also obviously also not just guys but also girls so it's i think it's the same anywhere yeah i totally agree with that that it really doesn't depend on the nationality or culture but it depends on the person it's just that at that time i wasn't really exposed i was just in cebu for the whole 28 years of my life and then i moved to dubai afterwards then the whole thinking just you know changed but yeah that was like weird (laughs) yeah can understand so you didn't have any like pre- predispositions of foreign nationalities and no changes on your perceptions before because you know you've dated different nationalities already even when you were like in your early 20s yeah so while i was in the philippines i've gone on dates with people from other nationalities but they were mostly also asian and i think like asian to asian 
the difference is not so big, but obviously Asian to European, the difference is is quite big and it's still, I can still see it. But honestly, I'm the type of person who likes experiencing different things more than comfortable things. So I like I like the fact that, that me and my girlfriend are very different from each other. But in terms of predisposition towards, I don't know, German people or European women, like I actually did not have any predisposition. So I came into, you know, Europe without really having any bias or prejudice so I was I always have and had a like an open mind about things obviously you hear from media from watching movies that you know it might be possible that they're not as hygienic as Filipino people Uh, but obviously that would also depend from person to person I think there's some truth to it but obviously it's not everybody is is like that I I don't know I don't know if I can see like the average Filipino person or the average Filipino girl is more like hygienic like I don't know they take take more care of themselves in terms of hygiene or appearance or whatever I don't know if if that's correct thing to say, but from like my observation, it it could be very possible. But obviously, again, case to case basis. But besides that, also I, I I had this idea that they're very open minded, which I like because I'm obviously I'm also very open minded as I come from a like liberal background, and so so yeah, I was always open to whoever. I had no idea that oh I should date a certain person from a certain race because this race has X features that I I like or. Because most people from this area are like this. No, I just, whoever I meet and, and and if they're a nice person, if we can, you know, get along, it doesn't really matter. So people should be able to to love whoever they want and be with, every, with whoever they want. And obviously there will be predispositions built because of watching too many movies, listening to me, too many people. But I think part of the enjoyment of the whole process is just getting to know, you know, different people. Yes, I totally agree with that. And let's say, for example, a person who was just like in the city like I was before, so they don't form that wide horizon in themselves and then and then if you watch these movies then you have like this type of thinking so it's which is like also not too wide right so and with the hygiene as well i also heard about that but maybe because of the weather as well yeah it's very cold but yeah good thing Mm -hmm. as well that it it is person to person so i'm glad that my husband is (laughs) hygienic (laughs) enough (laughs) so yeah yeah i understand (laughs) so and then also me i have some predispositions before like what i've mentioned earlier and also i'm so lazy in trying like i feel that if i speak in english in a relationship like i couldn't express myself that much that was my Mm -hmm. thinking before but i didn't try it yeah that was my initial concern that oh if i will be in a relationship i have to speak english all the time (laughs) what a weird thinking right but i think some of the filipinos also have this that same thinking so but like when you are in the relationship or when you love that person you you tend to be more open as you said said and you tend to of course do that much effort in order to communicate with them as well yeah well for you obviously if you love that person obviously you have already this certain understanding and and words is just one you know way of communicating but there's so many other ways to communicate with your partner but at the same time you could also learn hungarian or you can teach your husband uh, bisaya so yeah <laughs> he, he he has learned some words as well but hungarian language is quite hard to i heard it's one of the hardest languages in the world i think or in europe at least yeah it's quite hard so and he said that oh just don't learn hungarian like nobody speaks here hungarian in australia so yeah (laughs) that's the difficulty because when you know meeting the parents so when i Ah. met his mother it was hard because i need a translator (laughs) yeah you need him all the time yeah yeah and how about you so how did your Uh family felt when they met jenny yeah so 2009 december we went back to the philippines for christmas she was with me and she obviously she met my my family the thing is 
the good thing is that my girlfriend actually speaks very fluent English, so didn't have any problems communicating. And at the same time, my family, everyone can speak English to a very high level. So there wasn't any problems in terms of communication. And I think also my mom really, like my family really liked her. She's a nice person and knows how to adapt to to different situations. So honestly, there was no issues there. And she also, she also liked her stay. And actually, most of the time that we were in the Philippines, we were just in my mom's place. We didn't actually do a lot of, of sightseeing. Like, I kind of feel bad for her because I, I brought her to a few places, but not enough because I also wanted to catch up with a lot of my friends and family. But yeah, yeah, she she enjoyed it and people liked her. I didn't get any, you know, racist comments or whatever that, ah, oh, why are you dating somebody who's not Filipino? And and could be possible that that's, that happens in some very conservative traditional families. But for us, it was it's good. And at the same time, I had the same experience when I was with her family. So although only one person in her whole family can speak English besides her, yeah, I'm slowly learning German. My German is not so bad. So it's getting better and better, the communication. But I think so far, her family likes me. They give me, <laughs> they've been giving me a lot of presents. So I think that's a positive sign if they give you some presents every now and then. So yeah. Oh, nice. And so do yeah. you speak German in your household with, with her? Yeah. No, yeah. no, because when we met, we only spoke English because we were both not living in Germany. And it was just like, it was just fate that kind of led me to work in Germany. So actually, I moved back to Germany before she moved back to Germany. So for some time, we were living in separate countries, but just across the border. So it's, it's a bit strange to, to imagine, but not so far from each other, but in different countries. But I learned German because I got a job here. But because we met in, in the Netherlands and we started our relationship in English, we kind of just continued in that direction mm. but yeah i mean my also her english is way better than my german and i don't think i'll ever catch up to her level of english with my level of german so until i catch up probably we would would not switch to german but when when we're with her family or some friends even just outside the apartment because in public you have to speak kind of german with the people outside so then then yeah we do speak german so speaking of communication so what were for you, the differences in communicating or the communication style. Yeah. So, you know, these like languages of love. Yes. Have you ever, have you yeah. ever taken this test? Yeah. yeah. I think she's a very gifts person and I'm a very time, time mm. person. So we have very different love languages, but I don't think that for me that matters. Honestly, like I said, like I really like differences. So the more different we are, I think, the more interesting our relationship. But yeah, in terms of communication, yeah, we're very open to each other. And I think as long as you can keep, you can be open to each other, then you'll have less and less problems. And how did you harmonize the differences? As you mentioned, you like the differences. So how yeah. did you, because sometimes, you know, it might be a miscommunication. So how were right. you able to harmonize it? Right. I think the first step is all always to have like an open mind so whenever you're with anybody regardless if they share the same beliefs of you or not obviously the people who don't share the same beliefs with you you'd always have some kind of conflict but you should always like have an open mind so i try never to really impose some things on her even though you know in the philippines this is the way it should be but i never try to impose that and i just try to learn why you know your partner or other people do things that that a specific way that's not the same as you know you were taught or that you know and it's just being and having an open mind and trying not to impose anything on other people try to learn also like why people do things in certain ways and and honestly you might be shocked that they might they might have actually a point and the way that they they do things. Mm, so it's really just understanding where you differ and you work from there because if we don't understand the difference, then it's like we are perplexed, right? Like why? Like we cannot accept it because we don't yeah. understand. Yeah, exactly. I think first step is always admitting that we are different and then trying to understand why we are different and then maybe looking at these differences. Does it really make sense? To do things one specific way or does it make sense to do things separate ways and i think there could be a merit also in doing things differently just because your family or your parents or your society told you it's a specific way i mean there's so many different ways of doing it that you know maybe it just wasn't considered before and you might actually learn something new or 
You might even adapt that other person's beliefs or that person's way of doing things. So one thing that really upsets me in Europe is actually when you go out on to restaurants or at home when you have food, people actually throw a lot of food away. Like they don't maximize. Like, for example, there's some leftover, they throw it away and you go to a restaurant. Normally in the Philippines, if there's something left over, you take it home, right? You ask if you can take it home. Here, it's quite normal to just have them throw it away. And this is something that I really fight for like no we ordered it we should finish it or if we have this kind of food we should make sure that we cook it before it expires or not never waste never waste food and obviously in the beginning they don't understand this concept so much until you know you you take them to the philippines and they realize oh yeah it's because there's a lot of people who don't actually have food and by making sure we don't have so much waste then maybe our our society can like produce just enough you know and enough for for us and you know enough for for everybody and not because there's like waste just having the idea of having waste is such a you know in filipino families your mom will always get mad at your dad like no you should finish all your food before you leave the table so this, these kind of things so obviously this is one idea that's really i think there's only one right answer to that is not having waste but at the same time you know when i came here you you notice that there's a very different way of of viewing this it's not like she fought me or people from here fought me over my belief but it's just that we had very different beliefs and that's one thing that i try to impose on her is try to be more careful with you know with food i could relate to that as well because i have the same thinking you know because philippines yeah. we're from the philippines yeah. right so when my husband yeah. always says don't make yourself too fat if you cannot really eat it because you know women we always like oh i'm getting too fat i'm getting i'm gaining mm. weight and then and then he always says that then why you eat the food that you can't even take anymore and then that gives mm. you brings you on more weight so that's his thinking about the food if you cannot eat it all then don't eat it because otherwise it will be bad for you so what are your top tips for interracial couples ah wow okay top tip obviously open mind just have an open mind as i already mentioned try not to think a certain way is correct and just you know be open to learning something new always and that would make your relationship uh, more exciting. I think this is true for any relationship, not just for interracial couples, but don't don't try to adapt yourself too much to that person's like. So you might, for example, I might be in Germany. I might try to be as German as I can just because I know that's that would make my my girlfriend more comfortable. But honestly, like you should just be yourself. Don't forget to be yourself. And I think that's you know, that's the reason they're with you is because you're different. It's probably not because I look Filipino, but I act like a German person, but they're with you because you're a very different person. And probably that's that's what they like about you. So um, I see a lot of people, you know, who come here and they try to, you know, you, of course, it's nice to get the culture, but always try to maintain, you know, your identity and, and your, your, your true personality. And I think that you shouldn't forget about that. So that's something I do. Although I'm trying to learn the language, um, getting to know the culture better, but at the same time, I'll never kind of change myself and try to be more like more German. That's not, that's not going to happen. So I think for interracial relationships, those are important points. I'd say another important point also is to maintain kind of well, for me, this is important. I don't know how, how you find it, but it's also important for you to make sure that your partner also gets included in your culture. So even though, for example, you're, you're in Australia, but your husband has his own thing with his friends on, on WhatsApp or his own thing with his family, you know, little and little by little, try to in, involve the person with, with what's happening. So actually, same thing with my girlfriend when, we have, when I have some Zoom events, even though it's sometimes in, in Tagalog or in Filipino, I, I still invite her so that, you know, she, she can feel that like she's part mm. of that thing so i think that small things that that could help yeah strengthen the relationship also try to teach her a little bit of tagalog but it's it's hard <laughs> yes like retaining your individuality so it's really uh, i mean not only interracial couples as you said i certainly uh, agree with that because some people might lose themselves in the relationship right and then mm -hmm. that that becomes toxic and all and also if i may add it springs on the same way as like the communication so mm -hmm. emphasize that there is a difference but do not assume that they know the difference and then exactly. like do not suffer in silence like oh we're different and i'm not telling that person that 
there is a difference. So mm-hmm. do not suffer in silence. And for me, I think see the person on equal grounds. This this is um for me because you know I didn't date any other non Filipinos at first. I was very like shy. I would think that because of the maybe the colonial mentality. So that's why I succumbed to the ways of that mentality. But if we remain as we are, like we will be the same persons as they would have liked us in the first place. Yeah, exactly. So uh, before no. we wrap up this episode, yes. so I have some few questions unrelated to the topic. Ooh, so are you okay. ready? Go ahead. So if you could be in a movie, what would it be? If I could be in a movie, what would it be? That's hard. Um, really? <laughs> If I could be in a movie, I'd pick... Or series, or TV series, let's say. No, let me pick a movie. I know a movie. I know a okay, movie. Okay. I just thought about it right, right now. Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog ah, Millionaire. Okay. Because I have a lot of life experiences that I think are very exciting and very life-changing. That, that if I had to join like a game show, hopefully those questions are some of the things that I've experienced in my life and I could answer it. Ah, that would be a cool movie with me. Nice. And, and I'd, I'd be rich in the end. Yeah, so nice. That's the most important part. Yeah, yes, exactly. So <laughs> next, what was your favorite TV show when you were growing up? All right. Okay. Favorite TV show. I'd I'd say I have two favorite TV shows growing up. One is anime, Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk because I used to play basketball when I was in grade school and high school. Because the main character there, Sakuragi, is not very talented, but through hard work he became like a good player. So I always thought that I'm not that good. I'm just tall, but maybe if I work hard enough, I'll be very good. But I I ended up being not very good, just like enough to be in the school team, but not more than that. And another show that I really loved growing up has has something to do as well with 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 basketball is One Tree Hill. <laughs> You watched One Tree uh, Hill. Uh, like yeah, I noticed that, but didn't TV watch series. it. But yeah, I'd say more slam dunk growing up. Ah, nice. Yeah. So next, would you mm-hmm. rather walk around with a salad for a head or a broccoli for arms? <laughs> wow. Salad for a head, probably. If I had broccoli as arms, there are a lot of things in life I won't be able to do. But if I have salad as a head, I can still you know, do some sports. And and because because in general, I think a lot of girls like being healthy. They like salad. Therefore, with a face as a salad, like I'd still be attractive to some girls. Nice. <laughs> nice one, <laughs> nice one. So, all right. So where can our Zesties find you? Yeah, so I have a podcast Glee mentioned in the beginning called Pop Your Cultural Cherry. So I'm on yeah, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, and all the other like main podcast streaming platforms. I also have an Instagram and a Facebook page. You could just search me, Pop Your Cultural Cherry. The name's quite unique. And if you'd search it, I'm the only one gonna, my show's the only one gonna show up. So yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much for coming in on the show, Lavin, and more Yo. power to your podcast. Thank you, Glee. You too. Hey, Zesty. Hope you enjoyed this chill conversation with Lawin. So how about you? How did you meet your partner? Let me know in the comments or send an email to gleefultalkshow at gmail.com if you'd like to share a story of how you met your partner. I might be putting a segment like this here and there all throughout the season, so it'll be great to hear your story. Please don't forget to rate and subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting platform or follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube or visit www.gleefultalkshow.com. If you'd like to support the show, please head down to the episode notes to find out how. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Uh